Hi everyone, it's Erica again, and what do you know, I'm back here to talk about the bow. I'd like to review the basics of what we talked about in the first video. In order to make a be beautiful smooth sound, we want to have a nice rounded bow hold, a straight wrist, and bent thumb, and the pinky on the top. This allows us the flexibility to move our hand instead of getting stuck in an awkward position. And then we want to keep the bow with flat hair close to the bridge. Now, how does this affect dynamics? Have you heard that word before? Dynamics is simply what, um, how loud or how soft you're playing on your instrument. If we want a big sound, these same things that I talked about will help you. Closer to the bridge, all of your hair, and then using lots of bow. So here's an example on the scale. And if I change all three of those, so I'm gonna use the side of my hair over the fingerboard and use just little bows. Let's see what a difference that makes. Maybe you can guess what's gonna happen. It's incredible to me how much that changes the sound. It's gotten much softer. It's almost maybe creepy or whispery. Um, and so we have three things that we talked about and you can play around with all of those things and make all kinds of combinations to change your dynamics and your sound. Let's try that a little bit together right now. We're gonna use this same sheet as we used before and use number three, the scale with all those eighth note slurs. At the bottom, the beginning of the line, let's use little bows and then as we get to the top, we're gonna to use more and more. And then when we get lower onto the scale, we're gonna use less and less so that we end up with little bows at the end. See if we can just try that out together. One and two and three and four and. And then if you want, for fun, you can try it the opposite way. Use lots of bow at the beginning, and as you get higher, use less and less. And then when you get back down to the bottom, you're using more and more so that you end up with the whole bow by the end. This is a really good way of practicing one of the ways of changing dynamics. And it's probably one of the easiest. You could do the same thing by changing how much hair you use or where you play on the string. Now there's one other thing I wanted to talk to you about this time, and that was phrasing. And maybe this is another word that you're not familiar with. I would compare it to how you speak. So if you're talking to somebody and you just talk at the same tone all the time, or maybe you talk really slowly, or like a robot, that's kind of monotone, it's a little bit boring. You would kind of get tired of talking to that person after a while if somebody was saying things to you like that. <coughs> Excuse me. But if you really want to keep somebody's interest, you have inflection in your voice and it might get higher or lower or louder or softer. It's like saying a sentence and making it interesting. So let's look at the phrasing study again on this same sheet. See that? And there are some crescendos and decrescendos. We're going to use the amount of bow to change what happens to the dynamics. So where you see those crescendos and decrescendos will help shape that phrase. It'll make it into an interesting sentence and hold your audience captive. Let's try it together. One, two, three. Take your time. 
time using more bow. Whole bow here. 